Welcome to DIY Easy Crafts. Today we're going to take a look at how to make a USA shaped carved wood waving American flag. Now this video is very similar to the last video that I did uh, making a rectangular flag uh, but we're just going to continue on and there's a few things that I did different in order to uh, profile the outline. So I'm going to start by cutting a, a total of 13 boards that are 38 inches. These are, are standard one by twos. I got them down at Home Depot. And I'm going to use three pipe clamps to clamp them all together. Once they're clamped together, um, I'm going to uh, use a marker just to mark number each one of these boards. So that in case they get mixed up, I can always reassemble them in the, in the correct order. And I'm going to go through this first part, you know, pretty quickly. We're just going to touch on each, on each element. I'm going to use a, um, a Sharpie just to draw out the shape of the curves on the edge of the boards. Um, completely around the entire rectangle. And I'm also going to just mark on top, just give me a visual reference of, as to what area I'm going to grind the curves. Now these flags are a little bit different than most that you see online. You know, I make mine out of one by twos, so the end result is a very lightweight flag, perfect for indoor um, display, very easy to hang on the wall. I'm using a grinding tool which I got from Amazon. It's the Omni grinding tool. Uh, really goes through wood very, very quickly. I did. I use this for all of the rough cuts. So I ground each one of those grooves uh, with this Omni tool, and then I'll, I'm just going to go back over the same area with a regular standard flap sanding wheel. This is an A grid, just to smooth out all of those coarse grind lines. And the end result here is you don't want any flats at all. Uh, you want it to curve uh, right from the bottom of the groove, you know, over the top and into the next groove, all curves. And then the final step is going to use a, an 80 and then 120 grit paper on an oscillating sander. The 80 grit was, you know, pretty quick. Most of the real deep grooves I had removed with the, uh, with the flap sanding wheel. And once all of the grooves are done, are done. I'm going to mark uh, each board and I'm also going to draw a line. If you look in the upper left, I drew a line that was uh, 15 inches out. That's the, the border of the union, the area that's going to be blue. So I've marked each one of the white boards with some painter's tape um, and I'm going to use a torch just to, to make the, the bottom of each groove a little bit darker just to bring out some of the highlights of the wood. Then I'm going to unclamp everything and I'm going to remove all of the white stripes, all of the boards that have that painter's tape on it. And I'm going to move these completely off the workplace uh, so that it's almost impossible for me to make a mistake, um, you know, and stain one of the stripes that's supposed to be white. Now that line that I showed you to mark, um, you know, 15 inches out, that's how long um, the union is or the blue area is. I'm going to just hammer in a razor blade and that's going to help prevent the red stain uh, from seeping onto the area that's going to end up being blue. Now it's not really that big a deal if a little bit of red gets passed. Um, most of that is going to get painted and would get covered. But you don't want a lot of red because um, the stars are going to not be white but are actually going to be wood tones. So you're going to be able to see the, the, uh, the wood grain through the stars and if red got into any of those areas it would, it would kind of ruin the, the effect. So anyway, I stained this with red wood stain that I made just by uh, using some red oil-based paint and mixing it with a clear wood stain. After I painted it all on and wiped it all off, I let that completely dry. I also used some regular clear stain on the white areas, just to give it a little bit more detail. Then I'm, after this is completely dry, I'm going to reassemble the flag on the same pipe clamps with wood glue just lining them up as best as possible. A nice bead of, of wood glue along each piece. And then I'm going to clamp all of these together and let them completely dry overnight. It's winter here right now. I actually, I actually took that whole assembly and put it in my boiler room so it would really dry completely. Um, I wiped off, before it dried, I wiped off any excess uh, wood glue that seeped out or in between each one of the boards. So now we're going to do the profile in the United States. I printed out the profile on a clear film. 
which I got at, CV, at uh, Staples. And then I kind of jerry-rigged this uh, so that it's held with a piece of cardboard, and I got a, a flashlight mounted above that, and you can see the outline uh, projected onto my carved wood flag. And then I just used a pencil to trace that outline. So nothing real sophisticated here. Uh, the other way of doing it would be to print out the outline on individual pieces of 8.5 by 11 uh, printer paper and then tape them all together and cut them out. Uh, either way, however you get the, uh, the profile of the United States you know, onto the flag, it, it's fine. Then very carefully cut it out. Um, if you had a bandsaw, that would be wonderful. I just used the jigsaw. These 1x2s are not strong like plywood would be, so you have to be real careful with some of the small pieces like, like Florida and the, the parts that project out like uh, Maine. Uh, if you bang it you know, or tap into it, it could very easily break off. And I'll show you how we're going to deal with that in a couple of minutes. I'm also going to go back to the flap sanding wheel and I'm going to chamfer the whole outside uh, diameter, outside profile, so that the going to make it a uniform thickness, you know, somewhere in the 3 8 range, just by eye. And that's going to be, that's going to really help with the illusion that this thing is a waving flag. Uh, so when this is mounted on a wall, a lot of the flag is actually going to be lifted off of the wall. So you didn't see any of the white from that chamfered area. I'm just using a propane torch uh, to burn not only the edge, but also the whole area that's chamfered. I'm also going to flip it over and I'm going to burn um, the whole profile, just the outer edge of the profile. I just think that it makes it stand out a little bit more. But you can do whatever you want as far as your own artistic ability. This is how I'm going to deal uh, with those little pieces having a tendency to, to break off. I'm going to glue some backing, backer boards onto the back of this flag. And I'm just use, use a couple weights to hold them into position while the wood glue dries. Um, I even used, like this piece going over Florida is a uh, paint stirrer and the piece up by Maine. But that will add a lot of rigidity so if I happen to be carrying it and touch it into the wall, it's not gonna break off. It also gives me um, some wood that I can actually screw into with some small screws in order to run a wire and hang this thing on the wall. Now, in order to create the union, again, the blue area with the stars, uh, I'm going to use self-adhesive vinyl stars. I have a vinyl cutting machine called a, a Silhouette Cameo, but you can get vinyl stars online or on Etsy. Um, they also sell stencils, uh, flag stencils, where you could just uh, spray paint the white stars you know, onto a, a blue background. Um, I like doing it with the self-adhesive vinyl stars because then I spray the blue over it, and when I remove the stars, I'm going to have um, the wood showing uh, right through that dark blue. I like the wood green instead of a bright white star. So I've taped off the entire flag. I'm now using a, um, a royal blue or a navy blue spray paint, which I found down at the local uh, Ace Hardware. And when that dries, I'm going to peel off each one of those stars. So nothing about this project was very difficult. Um, you know, the whole thing didn't take very long at all. Most of the time uh, was spent, you know, waiting for glue to dry, uh, stain to dry, or paint to dry. When I got all the stars removed, uh, the only additional step is to give, I gave it two coats of a, of a high gloss clear lacquer. And then this is the finished result hanging on the wall. It really is, it ends up being a very nice display piece. So this is a, a USA uh, shaped or profiled carved wood American flag made out of one by twos, a real neat do-it-yourself project. I'd like to invite you to um, take a look at the web. Uh, we've got a website called www.diyeasycrafts.com. I've got a variety of other do-it-yourself and patriotic themed projects on there.